Linda Medeiros with What's Linda Cooking for ORC TV. Today, it's around the holiday season, so I have my red on today. Um, and we are doing um, three appetizers. Easy appetizers that you're going to be able to throw together for the, for the holiday season. Just easy, easy, easy. We're going to do stuffed mushrooms. We're going to do um, herb parmesan pinwheels and then we're also going to be doing like a little little tiny cheese ball so um, what I have here we're gonna start with the, the stuffed mushrooms I have here our um, just my skillet kinda just heating up a little bit right here I'm gonna put in some olive oil this is a new olive oil thing so let's bear with me there okay so then what we're going to do is I have taken the mushroom caps and I've taken them off. Let me get my mushrooms so you can see them too. So here are my mushrooms. And I took the caps off and we're going to use these in the um, stuffing for the stuffed mushrooms. Now, this is one of those things that my family, every holiday, have to have stuffed mushrooms. My brother, it just would not be a holiday without stuffed mushrooms. And he has started making them himself and um, he's kind of got a high self-esteem like me, so he thinks that he makes the best stuffed mushrooms out of everybody. So um, I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see when we're done with these, see if they're better than his, okay? So we've got, like, just the mushroom stems going. And then I'm going to just take half of an onion and just kind of cut that up. Let's put this over here. Just kind of chop it up real good. And I'll use my chopper here. Let me just move this around a little bit. There we go. And I'm also going to put in a little bit of seasonings and garlic and all the yummy stuff that goes along with this. So we're going to put in some onion. My little food mover here. There we go. Oh my gosh, and it is smelling so nice in here. And I'm going to put in some um, salt and pepper, and I think I've got some salt over here. Let's grab this. Let's grab this. Put a little bit of salt. It'll sweat it out a little bit. Put a little pepper. There we go. I do have a salt mill, too, because I like to use uh, Himalayan salt, but I didn't bring it with me today. So we're just going to put that right there. And then I'm going to put in some garlic. I've got some fresh garlic. You definitely want to use fresh garlic for this. So we've got one, there we go, there's the skin, throw that away, and here's another one, okay. Now, what I like about these is I can make these the day before the holiday and just put them right into the refrigerator and then heat them, you know, cook them in the oven when I am just ready, going to be ready to serve, okay. Because we do have a lot of appetizers, my family likes a lot of appetizers for the for the holidays, so we tend to make a bunch of them. So we're just going to kind of go like that. And then what I have here is some bread. I had a baguette for another recipe, so I took part of it and I just made some crumbs with it. So we're gonna actually throw this in here because that's pretty much down right there. Let's put that right there. And here's what I like to add to mine. I like a little butter. Got a little wayward thing here. So I'm going to put eh, about that, about half of this butter. Because I like the flavor of the butter in the stuffed mushrooms. So we've got that going in there. And then a little bit of Italian seasoning, because of course we need that in there. There we go. And a little bit of parsley. Now I wanted fresh parsley, could not find fresh parsley um, at Aldi. So I just kind of got to take this off. We need more than that. There we go. And oh my gosh, the Italian seasoning is smelling so, so nice in here. And once this kind of comes down, I'm going to add a little more of the oil to have that all come together a little bit more. And then also, I like to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And you know me, I like real Parmesan cheese. So we're going to kind of tent this a little bit. 
Because you know, the stuff that you buy in the can um, and, or in the bag, even the ones that look fresh in the, in the bag, if you look on the, um, just the uh, directions, you know, or the ingredients, I should say, it has cellulose powder. And what is cellulose powder? It's wood pulp. So, you know what? I don't want to be paying for wood pulp. So I just get the ones that are in the block for all of my cheeses. It's just a little bit easier. Sometimes I do cheat a little bit, um, especially when I'm at the Council on Aging. I'm going to shut this down now. There we go. I'm going to shut that down, and I'm going to add a little more oil to this. And this is going to come together really, really nicely. Okay, And I'm going to then scoop it right into my, if I could do, I'm going to take this off. There we go. There we go. And that's going to kind of bind together. And if you need a little bit of water or stock, you can do that with it too. One of the things that I love to add also is if I have some ham, I will sometimes um, add a little bit of ham to this. Okay. So where's my bowl? Here it is. I'm going to put this all right in the bowl. It's just going to make it a little bit easier for me to stuff these mushrooms. Okay. Now, I've got my mushrooms right here, and I've got my little scoop. These little scoops are phenomenal for doing things like that. So we're just going to fill these and then bake them in the oven and they are going to come out amazing. But like I said, sometimes I will put ham in these, sometimes you can put, you know, mozzarella cheese if you want in them and if it's falling apart it's okay. Don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Um, some people like to put egg in it so that it holds together a little better. I don't like to put egg in my stuffing um, just because you know, I like to eat it, and salmonella and all of that. I like to eat it raw sometimes, so salmonella, don't want to do that. So, even though I think I told you I eat raw cookie dough all the time. So, making a mess, that's okay. And I have it right on here, because a lot of times what I do is I serve it right, right on something like this. Now, what we can do, which I think I'm going to do, is drizzle a little bit of... Parmesan cheese right on top of these, and that's going to get nice and golden. Look at that, huh? Look at how nice that is. Okay, so these are going to go into the oven at about 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, okay? And then that appetizer will be done. Let's put that right on here. I've got another one going in too, so, oh, and we got some falling down, but that's okay. We'll pick them up afterwards. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do, we're going to clean this off a little bit. We're going to make some Parmesan pinwheels. And I love, love, love this recipe. It's so easy um, and so delicious. Okay, so cream cheese. We need our cream cheese first. Let me look for a bowl. Oop, here it is. So I've got about, hmm, about a quarter of a cup of, uh, I mean half of a container. So four ounces of cream cheese. And I'm just going to put this right in here and let that go for just a little bit. It's going to soften it up a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit easier to just spread on my uh, crescent rolls, okay? And I'm going to listen for this because I don't want it to get overly done, okay? So I'm just going to listen in real quick, make sure that it's not popping and, and so forth, okay? And I think that's going to be about right, right there. OK. Because I don't want it too, too soft. I want it just, yeah, see like that? That's kind of what I want. So back to my Parmesan cheese, OK? So we're going to do a little more Parmesan cheese. About on these, I'm going to say we're going to need about a third or so of a cup. So I'm going to guesstimate it, and I'm okay with a little more, obviously. I'm always okay with a little more cheese. How about you? Always. More cheese, better. Much better. Okay, so put that in. And then I'm going to put a little bit 
of fresh rosemary. And I have this, some fresh rosemary right here that I have taken off of the stem. This is my fresh rosemary. Now you can grow this, but in this, in our climate up here in the Northeast, can't have it outside, you have to take it in. But I know some people from a little bit south, uh, south of us, they'll have these outside in their, um, their uh, landscaping and so forth, and they'll have it outside all the time. And they grow really big too. And uh, I wish we could have these, but you can, if you have some outside, you can take it in and then just take it back out when the temperature gets better. So that's how it, rosemary. I got these actually at Sid with uh, Friendly Fruit for a buck, a whole big thing of them. So I'm gonna dry them um, and uh, have that all winter long. So I'm gonna chop these up just like that. And it's okay, I'm just gonna chop it up as much as I can with this, and you can see. Now you can use dry for this if you want. I just like to use the fresh. So we're just going with fresh today. So we're gonna put this in here and then take the rest. And if you could smell how nice this rosemary just smells, it is amazing. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then I do want a little bit of garlic. Just one, just one, because you know what? You know me, if garlic's not in there, I put it in there anyways. So, cause I just love the flavor of it. So we're just gonna put that in there, just like that. Mix this all up. And this is going to be the basis. Now I've also made this by the way, with Italian seasoning. So instead of the rosemary, I've done Italian seasoning. And you know what? I'm gonna put a hair more rosemary in here just because I want to because I just think it needs a little bit more. So we're just gonna take these off, just like that. I don't want the woody stem, I just want the little leaves, about that much. Let me get my chopper back out. So I have made this with um, Italian seasoning, I have done it with dill, that's another good one, you know, with a, a nice dill. Um, so you can play with this recipe a little bit, and do you know whatever kind of herbs that you like, but I like this original recipe a lot with the um, with the rosemary. So I'm gonna pick this up, put a little more in there, mix that up, and then that's gonna be the filling for our pinwheels. So what's going to be the rest of it? Well, we've got some crescent rolls, and I always have a hard time opening these. I don't know about you but I always have a little hard time. Let's see. And these were on sale at Aldi. So I picked up a bunch of them for the holidays because I do like to use these for appetizers and so forth. We're gonna need to cut because I can't, oh, there we go. <laughs> so they have two separate things. We're not going to separate these. We're actually going to kind of keep these together. And the, the secret of crescent rolls is to use them straight from the refrigerator. These have been out for just a little bit, um, so you can tell that they're getting a little sticky. Um, and that's because, you know, crescent rolls you're not supposed to kind of have out. I'm gonna actually do them this way. And then press the, and seal them a little bit. And if you have a roller, you know, like a little, uh, you know, rolling pin, you can just kind of roll these out a little bit, but I just kind of press them just like this. And then I'm gonna take this nice mixture, put it right on here, and spread this out the entire length of this. And this, what I love about this is I can do this whole thing and roll it up and then save it and put it in the refrigerator just before my guests arrive. I then cut them all up and bake them, throw them in the oven. So it's a nice kind of mostly do ahead appetizer because when I have people over for the holidays um, or for parties and, and so forth, I like to enjoy it. I like to enjoy the time with my friends. I don't wanna be cooking the entire time. I'm gonna use my fingers here because this is what I would do at home. And just do it like, just like that. Okay, now, we're gonna roll these. And this is the part, once it's rolled up, you can put it 
in like wax paper and put it in the refrigerator, okay? And then, let's see, this is still a little warm, but that's okay. We're gonna take, I'm not gonna take that one, I'm gonna take this knife, and we are just going to cut these into little pinwheels, just like that. Ooh, coming apart a little bit, that's okay. And these are all going, they're gonna be baked in the oven at about 400, 375. I've got the oven on 400, so I'm just gonna bake them at 400 for about 15 minutes. And they're gonna puff up, just like crescent rolls do, they're gonna puff, puff up and um, have that gooey center. Now, here's the thing. You can't eat these right away when you get them out of the, out of the oven. Why? That molten lava <laughs> of the cheese is going to burn your mouth. So you're going to wait a little bit, maybe five minutes or so, and then you can eat them, okay? Um, I have made that mistake before, um, so I'm just going to save you the pain of that. Notice I'm using a, um, one of my platters that's actually a platter that can be baked in. I like this easy step for when I am having people over. So I use my platter in the oven, and then it just makes, I can just take it out and serve it, okay? So these popping into the oven. Oh, my stuffed mushrooms. I got a couple of them that have fallen over, but that's okay. Okay, let's go on to the cheese. Ooh, get rid of this right here. Let's go on to the cheese pla uh, the cheese balls. Oh my gosh, this recipe! I have a I have a um, I don't even need to put the recipe out actually, but I this recipe is from I'm going to use this bowl even though it has rosemary in it. I'm going to still use it. Um, this recipe was from my friend Chris's um, aunt Debbie. Okay, she would make a large uh, cheese ball, and she would use uh, smoked ham, which that's what I'm using right here, smoked ham, and some green onions to make this cheese ball. Well, she would make a huge cheese ball, put some ham on the outside, um, and be done with it. Well, I'm going to take just about this much for now. Well, people started changing the recipe, and Debbie wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> but. This is my adaptation of this recipe um, because I'm actually going to make them into little cheese, like bite-sized cheese balls, okay? Um, just fun, I find bite-sized anything fun. Um, and so we're gonna, this is how I've adapted this recipe and I think that you're gonna really love it. So let me see where my knife is. I put it down here. We're gonna take, so we have cream cheese, and I usually do a whole block, but because, you know, I'm doing it on camera, I'm only doing um, a little bit, you know, half a block. So we're going to cut these. And I might actually end up chopping these a little bit more because I might want them a little bit smaller. And you're going to use almost the entire green onions for these. And this is about three green onions that I'm using for this, uh, these cheese balls, okay? So we're going to put these right in here. Okay. And I'm going to chop them up a little finer. Because they're small, in a big cheese ball, I can keep these just the way they are. But because I am making these smaller, I kind of want them chopped up a little smaller. So, And you can use your food processor if you want to just kind of mix this whole thing up. And I don't know what I did with, oh, here it is, my food mover. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to mix these up, and I should have softened this, but I didn't, and that's okay. We're going to mix this up so that the ham is all incorporated into, and the onion is incorporated into the cheese, the cream cheese mixture. Now, different variations on this one, too. If you like, maybe you like um, cheddar cheese, you can always add cheddar cheese to the mix here, okay? But I just like the ham and the onion 
mixture with the cream cheese. But you can add some maybe Parmesan cheese or you can add, I need to do something with my hands here. Let's take this. Um, you can use a little bit of um, Parmesan or cheddar. I think for this mixture, I would use cheddar. Would be really nice, okay? Now, I'm also gonna take a little bit of nuts. Now, you could use either um, chopped walnuts or pecans, but I, you know what, I had the walnuts, so I'm just using the walnuts for this. And we're just going to chop this in, chop this up very, very fine, and I may need a little bit more, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little cheese balls, and we're gonna roll, I want a little bit of parsley, we're gonna mix this in, Fresh parsley is best, but the store that I went to did not have fresh parsley. They had cilantro, but they didn't have fresh parsley. So we're going to do that. And then I think I have my little scoop again here. And we are going to scoop these right into there. And I have a platter that I'm going to put these on right here. That's my eat, drink, and be merry platter. So we're just going to put these in here. Now, how I serve these is just with a little bit of um, uh, some bread and toothpicks. I use toothpicks so that everybody can pick them up easy. And these are going to go into the refrigerator, by the way. Once you do these, like I said, you could do these like the, night, the day before. It's actually better if you do it the day before. Um, and then just kind of put them right out when your guests arrive um, with the toasted baguette. I'll show you what I did with the baguette. Or you can use, if you want, you can use any kind of crackers. But I just like a toasted baguette instead. I just find that it just says, you know what, I took a little bit more time, made something a little bit more special for you um, for this holiday season or this party or what have you. Okay. Now, if you have people that are allergic to, to nuts and anything like that, you can just put an herb coating on this if you wanted to. There's no problem with just doing um, just a, a little coating. Like I said, like an herb coating or something like that. I might need a little bit more of the nut mixture, which will be fine if I do. I'm just going to actually do a couple more of these and that's it. Just to kind of show you how these are. And each one, when they serve, they can put it on a baguette or they can put it on, you know, split it between two baguettes. So here are my baguettes. And what I did was I just sliced them, put them on a, um, a little uh, baking sheet and at 400 degrees and just uh, toasted them. And look at how nice that is. That is a beautiful appetizer that just says, you know what, I kind of thought about you and I, and I, you know, did a little bit something extra instead of the big cheese ball, okay? So we're going to get these out of the oven in just a minute and then we're going to show the whole spread. Okay, I've got my pinwheels out of the oven and look at how beautiful these came out. They are, I can't touch them yet because they are like that molten lava with the, um, with the cheese. But look how nice they look spiraled. Just put them on a platter. I baked it on the platter and just serve it to your, to your friends and your family. Excellent, easy, make ahead. Now, and so many different variations of that. Also, you can put this mixture that I made in here. You could also put it in there and it would be really great. So we have the, um, the little uh, Debbie's little cheese balls that I made in the smaller um, size with our baguette. And then here are our stuffed mushrooms. I think my brother Tori would be really, really happy with these. I think he would probably eat all of these. I usually have to make about four times what I have right here for my family because we just eat them um, and we have to, if someone's late, we actually put them aside for them because um, we have people who love these so much. So this is our holiday appetizers. Again, stuffed mushrooms. Parmesan herb pinwheels, and uh, Debbie's cheese balls with a uh, toasted baguette. So you know what? This might be great for your holiday celebration. Quick, 
and easy. And you know, I hope you all enjoyed this. And if you want the recipes, just go to my website at www.whatslindacooking.com. That's the website. If you want to go to my Facebook page and like my Facebook page, it is www.facebook.com slash whatslindacooking. No spaces, no apostrophes. Um, like my page, share it, and uh, the recipes will be on there. Well, thank you so much. I'm Linda Medeiros for What's Linda Cooking at ORC TV. Have a great day. Bye now.